right, go ahead, like, and share. Good morning, loves. It's Wisdom Wednesday. Yes, 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 and yes. As you come on, do go ahead and like and share as I'm looking. I see some of you already up. I see mom. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Kenneth. Go ahead, guys. Host your watch parties. Let's get this day started. I'm excited about my guest for today. And I want you, I know you guys are going to receive her well. Hey, Avril. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you who have already been up and at it and you have been on the God Zone already this morning, uh, the Double Mint Twins, we're talking about reborn, recondition, and repurpose. So I'm excited about that word this morning. So I've already been fed this morning. I'm ready to get it going. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Sherry. Hey, Juanita. Hey, Christy. Hey, Avril. Good morning, loves. Please share. Hey, Princess. Thank you guys for being on this morning. Whew. If you're not starting your day with the God Zone, guys, you need to. This week, we are doing um, dynamic duos, and the duos are pretty dynamic. So good morning, Susan. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Rutho. Rutho, if you would, go ahead and drop the information for God Zone in the um, comments so everybody can see it and they can understand. It's not just um, for at 6 o'clock from 6 to 7. It's throughout the day that we are praying for one another that we're commenting, we're sharing inspiration and encouragement. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Hi, Angela. Thank you for being on this morning. Good morning, good morning. So we are about to go ahead and um, get into it, get into it. I see that we have quite a few of our friends on. And guys, go ahead. You can show some love. Um, it definitely helps us to spread the word Host your watch party. Hey, Lynn, thank you, thank you, all the way in Ohio. Always um, a part of the Freedom by Design movement. You know I love you, sis. Thank you for your support each and every time Freedom by Design pops up. We always see you on, so good morning, good morning. Y'all see I'm kind of wiggling in my chair this morning because I'm excited about my sister's testimony this morning. So let me go ahead and um, just kind of get into our, um, our scripture or meditation this morning. Thank you, Ruto. Good morning, um, Tracy. Good morning, Nora. So guys, the question this morning is, what's in your house? And I know you're probably saying, well, my wife, my husband, my kids, my mama, whatever, whatever, they all in here. No, no, no. What's in your house? So our scripture of study this morning is one that uh, we have, God keeps bringing us back to this on Freedom by Design. So it's a, it's a purpose. This is for a lot of us, especially in this season. Good morning, Mika. Good morning. So it's the widow's oil, 2 Kings 4, um, 2 Kings chapter 4. So it says, now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, and she said, your servant, my husband, is dead. Because her, her husband was at, one of the, at the school. He was in Elisha's school. You know, he was studying to be a prophet. You know, he was with him. He said, your servant is dead, and you know your servant feared the Lord. So he was a God-fearing man, and this was a God-fearing woman coming. And she said, and now the creditors are coming and they're going to take my two children as slaves. Can you imagine that? Like, okay, my husband is gone and now here come his creditors. I've exhausted everything that I have. And they're like, you know what? We're going to take your children so they can work off the debt. And Elisha said to her, how can I help you? And, you know, she looked, he's like, well, tell me, what do you have in the house? So again, I asked the question this morning, family, what's in your house? And all of us will say, well, it's really nothing in here. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, I can't do it. It seems like, you know, it's hard. Everybody is telling me, no, nobody wants to help me. Nobody wants to support me. You know, I don't know what to do. The question is, what's in your house? Now you see that picture of that house right there. So when I talk about house, um, yeah, it could be the four walls, but what's inside of here? What's in your house, the house that you walk around in every day? Her answer was, your servant has nothing but a jar of oil. And the word that I want to point out is, but, because a lot of us are so busy looking and, you know, we're coming up with ideas and we, we have great things that, great business plans and we're going to do a thing and then we say, but. And when we say, but, it totally negates everything that we said before, because but means here comes the doubt. But means, well, 
I don't know if I'm supposed to do it. But means when my cousin said, if I do this, then I'm, I'm acting like I'm better than them. Or, you know, I'm getting away. But will cause us to miss out on our blessing. But not this young lady right here. This young lady is my business partner. She is my sister. She is a dear friend. Um, she is somebody that I can confide in. You know, we met and it hasn't been a long time. And that's one thing about family. So when I say she's my sister, she's my sister. Family doesn't always have to be blood. You know, it's two people that are connected together by a bond. So, whoo, freedom by design. Help me welcome this morning my sister from another mister for sure, Miss Tina Dixon of Moolah Cosmetics. Good morning, Tina. Good morning. Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning, everybody. That was an awesome word and introduction. Thank you. <laughs> so beautiful this morning, as always, mm -hmm. as always. Thank you for joining us. I know it's early. Um, and we always see you on Freedom by Design Movement. And of course, you're, you're chi um, typing in and chiming in. But Tina, for those individuals who um, don't know you and we're gonna kind of get into your story, but just um, tell just give them a little uh, a little synopsis of you know who you are and, and you know where are you from? Okay, well again, I'm Tina um, and I am actually I'm from Georgia. I'm an Atlanta native. Yep, and um, So I'm, I'm here in uh, uh, Fairburn. I've been here for probably about two years, but I am an Atlanta native, Georgia Peach, Greater Baby, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> but um, so yeah, my, my business, Moolah Cosmetics, although it is a cosmetics business, I use this business to do all sorts of things. I'm not just a lipstick lady. Katrina could tell you that. <laughs> um, Let's see, I, I started this business with about 2013. And, and let me say, it, I didn't start it as a business in 2013. I started it as a hobby right, in 2013. Right. It was just something I was just doing. And um, like Katrina said, I, I'll share my story with you. And this hobby turned into a journey. And this journey turned into a business. And, and here I am today doing more than just um, cosmetics. You know what, Tina, it's very interesting that you say your business, um, you were doing it as a hobby because as mm -hmm. I understand, you were working in corporate America, were you not? Absolutely. So, what happened in corporate America? So 15 years, actually, I was with a company called SAP, and it's been almost a year now that a we I was laid off. So yeah, I, I spent 15 years in the software industry uh, with SAP. Great company. I loved it, but it got to the point where um, my job was replaced by an app. <laughs> so yeah, technology. And um, so, and the beautiful thing about that was, you know, I, I had a great job. So I, although I had this hobby, I didn't treat it as a business. I treated it as a hobby because I had my corporate America paycheck coming. You know, I didn't need the business because I had the money, but it was just something I'd do every now and then. And then the tables turned. <laughs> the tables turned on me. But the thing is, I still had this hobby that now I could put 100% of my time in and turn it into a business. And here, like I said, it's been almost a year now. And I have not, I have not had a need for anything. You know, my business has been able to, to sustain me and, um, and, and my family supporting me. I have the support system that I need. So I thank God that I did have this, this hobby that, um, that can support me now that I've lost my job. Amen. Amen. You know mm -hmm. what, Tina, it's so amazing that you say that because especially in this season, um, there are so many of us that have skills, talents, or we, mm -hmm. have things that we have been working on and we put that thing on the shelf and we play with it when we feel like it. And, you know, um, I, I posted a quote yesterday and it said um, something to the effect of I had to move you or move some things to make you uncomfortable to get you where I needed you to be. And as I heard you talk about, you know, your job being replaced by an app you know so many of us in this season work looks different you know yeah. there are so many people we're all a lot of people majority are working from home but i heard you also say it's been a year 
and you're still thriving. You're still doing mm -hmm. what you need to do. You were making a very substantial salary, I know, back then, but you're still mm -hmm. thriving. You're still mm -hmm. doing because moolah transitioned from being your hobby to being your business. And when we go ahead and we um, work on the blessing that he has given us, it looks different. In our conversations, I know you said you had two options once you um, received that, you know, your, you got your severance and that was going to last you for a while, but you said you had to choose between looking for another job and starting a business. And what did God tell you about what you were supposed to do, your next moves? Oh, Katrina, I, I, I dealt with that. I, I had trouble with making that decision. I, I was so torn. Like, do I get another job? Do I... You know, do I try to make this business flourish? Because I'll be honest, in the beginning, I was, I was, I was scared. I had doubt. You know, when you work in corporate America, you know how much is coming, and you know when it's coming. But when you work for yourself, the money could come, stop. It's up. You're down. You, you know, sometimes there's no certainty. But I knew that just working somebody's job was not for me. Um, although I could take my experience, go get another job. It's just, there's so much more to me. I am a creative, you know, I like to create. Um, and I had to look at the situation at first. I was a little, I was a little, um, hurt, but being let go, like I said, I was with them for 15 years, you know, I, I was set and I was a little hurt, but then I looked at it differently. I said, well, you know what? there were times where I said, okay, I need to focus on my business. And as long as you have, you're in your comfort zone, you know, I, ha I had that corporate America job. I probably wasn't going to put a hundred percent in my business. It was always going to be my little hobby, my little thing on the side. I wasn't going to give it what it needed because I was already comfortable, you know? And I feel like God took that from, you know, it could be like, okay, so let me, like you said, make you uncomfortable. And it's like, okay, this could be a blessing in disguise, me losing this job, because maybe this is what it's going to take for me to go ahead and flourish. Maybe this is what it's going to take for me to probably to go ahead and reach my full potential to put the energy in, because if I don't put the work in, I won't get nothing out of it. You know, I don't have a set paycheck that's coming. I've got to do the work in order to, um, you know, to, to be successful in order to succeed. So that's kind of why I was torn. Um, because that can be scary. Success can be scary sometimes if, if we're honest with ourselves. Um, because you are responsible. <laughs> You're responsible for everything. You know, there's no sick leave. There's no sick pay and time off of vacation. So you got to do the work. But I made the decision to just go ahead and go full force with the business. And I said, you know what? Okay, this is a blessing. I got a severance package. You know, it's not going to last forever. But it'll last enough for me to go ahead and, you know, hit the ground running with my business and see what I can do with it, see if I can make it grow, see if I can, if it can sustain me. So that's what I decided to do. And um, things were going good. Uh, lipstick sales was up. I hosted um, um, a, a beauty brunch that was very successful. And then, you know, so I was happy. I felt like I made the right decision. And then all of a sudden, boom, we get hit with COVID. <laughs> And I was like, oh, Lord, now what I'm going to do? <laughs> because nobody buying, nobody's buying lipstick. Nobody's going anywhere. Everybody's in the house. Um, sales were going down. And I started thinking again, okay, it's time to go find me a job. Mm. You know, <laughs> maybe I need to go find a job. I, I, I thought I had made the right decision. I was doing good, but these sales are going down. I got to find, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Amen, amen. You know what? That's amazing. When you say the sales are going down, I'm like, okay, I was at the beauty brunch. It was phenomenal. I'm like, I still want to buy stuff and look cute, but <laughs> I didn't think about it from that perspective how, yeah, here comes COVID. You know, you're, mm -hmm. hurt, you're out. And once COVID hit, you know, most some people feel like COVID just really disrupted everything. But Tina, COVID opened up a door for you, did it not? absolutely it did and it, it was actually a surprise kind of a surprise to me the way it, things took off so what i noticed was a lot of people were not um buying the lipsticks everybody was walking around with their face covered up because they had they were wearing masks 
And so I said to myself, well, maybe I should get me some branded mask and, you know, just kind of add that to the inventory and, and see how that goes. And um, not only did I do a brand, but the branded mask weren't really selling, but I had came up with a catchy phrase, too cute for Rona. So too cute for the Corona. And I put that on the mask and had a mask made and that started selling. And then I started getting, you know, inquiries about, well, can you um, design a mask that, that, you know, asking for different type of designs on a mask. So I actually had reached out to someone that I know that make masks and she wasn't able to make the mask for me. She said she was too busy. So I was like, okay, uh, so what am I do? So I reached out to my aunt that knows how to sew to see if she can help me make masks. So then I had actually given up on the mask idea after a while because I was like, I don't have anybody to help me. And then I, I said, you know what? <laughs> Be still. You're doing too much. Because I started thinking about going to get a job again. I think, again, that's just fear. Going to get that job, that's just comfort because you know that paycheck is coming. And I started looking around. And one thing that I do know for sure is God has already given you what you need. He's already given it to you. You, you, you already have it. You just need to take um, inventory of your resources. Take inventory of the things that you have around you. And... I, again, I was torn on whether or not I wanted to continue on with this business or, or, or um, get a job. And you know how when you, in the heavy thought, you start cleaning up the house. I was just cleaning, cleaning, <laughs> cleaning out the garage, cleaning out closets, just cleaning and thinking and thinking. And I found my sewing machine that I've had, <laughs> that I've had since like 2008, 2008 or 2009. It's just been sitting up just dusting. But I know how to sew. But it's a, it's a gift that, it's a talent that I wasn't doing anything with. I don't, I don't sew, but yeah, I know how to, but I was doing nothing with it. So I pulled that sewing machine out and I was like, let me see, can I make the mask myself? Well, I'm trying to get everybody else to make it for me. Let me just see if I can make it myself. And I did. I actually did a pretty good job of making the mask. So I made a few and I posted them. Let me see what type of response I get. And I got a great response. And when I say a great response, ever since then, I have been sitting at this sewing machine just sewing all day, all night. <laughs> I don't even know if I could call my business Moolah Cosmetics anymore because I sell more masks than I do cosmetics. <laughs> but that, but the thing, the beauty behind that, and that is a testimony because these masks, um, I probably sell more masks than, than I have lipsticks in, in 2020. Yeah. In, in the year of 2020, I was looking at my numbers just two days ago, and I was like, whoa, I've made this many masks. I've actually had to go ahead and get some help to come in and help me with making masks. And and I just had to think about that, think about that and, and just look at it like, look at God, you know, because I'm, I'm, he gave me an answer to how to keep my business afloat. This is just a season. And I keep trying to give up when I go through these seasons. You can't do that. Just sit down, be still. Take a look around your house. God has already given you everything that you need. And I so every time I think about, you know, trying to go get another job or walking away from my dream, it's like, here you go. You was worried about this one. Look, here you go. You worried about that. Here you go. You got it. You, you you got it. I've already given you what you need. You, I just need you to pay attention and look for it. Yes, I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the um, comments. I see Bernadette just put Moolah mask and cosmetics right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> guys, if you have not seen um, Tina's mask, I do have Too Cute for Rona. I have posted that on Instagram. <laughs> I just received a um, family set of Miami Dolphin and these are custom quality mask mm -hmm. she even makes kids masks and you know as i sat there and i was looking i'm like watching tina post i'm like let me find out tina over here making masks <laughs> and then as i talked to her she was like yeah i'm actually sewing the mask you know and mm -hmm. when i received mine the quality so i'm and i'm looking at you now and i'm watching and i see you're getting corporate orders you're not getting like one and two orders you're getting bulk mm -hmm. orders and it's just that thing is spreading because I know we talk with them. You're like, I'm trying, I'm at the sewing machine and I'm trying to get, and I'm like, oh my goodness, it just shifted in this season. And I thought about your story in general. And I'm like, look at how God is providing for her because she, even when we 
um, we, our faith begins to waver. And I heard you say your faith wavered, but you stayed mm -hmm. obedient. You kept walking. And sometimes, guys, I know we say, oh, just have faith. Um, we have to do something. Sometimes that mustard seed faith is truly all we have, and it's going to be all we need to get us through. And as my sister continues to walk and be obedient, God keeps opening doors for her. So her business shifted from one thing to the next. So for whoever is out there, as you're thinking about or you're feeling um, like, you know, we feel like we're having that pity party and I can't believe they, you know, let me go. I can't believe this door has closed for me. Sometimes he has to slam the door in order for us to walk into our destiny in order for us to live in purpose or on per in our purpose so that we can do the things and touch the people that we need to touch because at doing what tina was doing before it might have been a limited amount of people now she's touching so many people with something um with a mask you know and not only is she touching them but she's helping to save lives she's being an essential service provider you know in her providing mask and you know what um tina i'm looking and i see um people saying you know uh, what a testimony you know we have to leave we have to have we always have what we need and our god is going to be so faithful to give us um you know what it is that he wants us to do not always what we want to do and i thank you for being transparent and saying every time that it got difficult sometimes you did waver sometimes you did say you know what maybe i do need to go back and get a job but he has been faithful because you have continued to be obedient so um tina I, before we go because i want people to know i wear your um cosmetic line all the time you know i love your stuff because mm -hmm. you actually make it it's it's vegan it, am i can you explain like what does that look like yes so it is i actually that's how the business so i started off actually making it so i have products that i make and then i also have products that i get from a manufacturer but yes they are vegan um, product no no animal testing no animal byproducts um in my in my and my lipsticks and my glosses. So yes, I they are vegan and I do make some of my glosses. The other products I do get from the manufacturer, but I pay attention to the ingredients and I ensure they stick to, you know, the quality and what I, and what I want to stand for. So keeping it vegan, absolutely. I'm and I'm also uh, my, you know, I have my my daughter with me. She's watching everything that I do, <laughs> and so I'm thinking about um, starting her a lip gloss line as as well. And that that's vegan and that's hand, um, made handmade as well. So that'll be coming soon. Teaching her since she's here, you know, school is out. So go ahead and teach her a little bit of business sense too. <laughs> All right, Tina, you have two daughters. Um, mm -hmm. How old are your daughters? Oh, they got a big gap. So I have a, I have a beautiful little two-year-old, and then I have a college student. She's a 20-year-old. Um, she, she attends Albany State University, and um, she's, yeah, she's going to be doing nursing. Okay. That's all right. Mm -hmm. all right. Yep. So ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. But I, I want you, Tina said a few things, and I'm just going to go back and recap. Number one, we have to take inventory of what's in our house. She talked about when she felt like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. She started cleaning up her house. She didn't go out and start buying stuff. She started cleaning up her house. And as she was cleaning up in her house, she ran across a sewing machine, you know, a, a talent that she said was a hidden talent, a talent that she had that she had not used. How many of us have businesses hidden on the inside or not even hidden, packed away somewhere in a closet. You know, something that, you know what, I, I was really good at this. And, you know, I put it down because I had the security of my paycheck. But you know what, um, I was telling um, Tina before we started, I had gotten a, a post or text the other day, and it says, in this next season, your paycheck is going to be your play money because you're going to have multiple streams of income. And when I saw it, I was like, I received that thing wholeheartedly. So it's time for us to take inventory. 
what's in our house. Let's go in. Let's start cleaning up. Let's get our house in order and see what's in our house because there are so many businesses that are going to flourish in this season out of our house. And I know that to be true. Um, you know as well as I do, Tina, when we go to Staples to purchase certain things, they're out. Like shipping label. Um, we were trying to get the shipping label um, printer and they're sold out. When I looked for a camera for my computer, they're on, the one I wanted is on back order because everybody is working from home, but people are still in need of things. People are still shopping. It's just shopping now is online. So what's in your house that you'll be able to use? And even when you have those moments where you feel like, you know what, Lord, I tried it and okay, it's not working. When you have those moments, understand he's going to be there to nudge you, but you can't give up in two days. You can't give up in um, a couple of months just when it gets started. Okay, I didn't get as many sales today as I got my first day. Okay, because you have to put in the work. Tina just said, you know, it can be scary being a business owner. I know that. She knows that because there is no sick leave. When we are out, when we are sick, when we're down, it, it's not happening. If you're not working, your business is not working. So we have to make sure that we go hard. The way we go hard for corporate America or for these other entities, we got to do that same thing for ourselves. We have to be able to show our children. You said something very impactful and powerful, Tina. Your daughter is home. She's in school to be a nurse, but now she's um, watching her mom who had a corporate America um, career now who is an entrepreneur who is showing her there is more than one way to do a thing you're you're a testament to both of your daughters on faith on perseverance on what it is to be strong and be able to find a way right within you don't have to leave what you have he's placed within us everything that we need so tina i just want to thank you um if you would tell us where we can follow you on instagram what is your instagram name so my instagram at uh, Moolah Cosmetics, and that's M U L A H. Um, I'm also on Facebook, um, Moolah Cosmetics um, Facebook page, and uh, my website is uh, shopmoolah.com. And again, that's M U L A H. All right, all right. Well, Tina, I thank you, my sister. I love you. I appreciate you getting thank up you. this morning and um, being vulnerable and transparent and sharing your testimony. <laughs> And we look forward to having you on again. And guys, you see her shirt, Mula Cosmetics. So you can make sure you follow her, M-U-L-A-H. So you can follow and shop with my sister. Go ahead and get your custom mask and um, stay tuned because when I come off, I'm going to take some pictures and I'm going to um, go ahead and post my custom Miami Dolphins for all y'all haters out there that don't like the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Tina. Thank you and have a blessing. Bye-bye.